Hello, thank you for tuning in. Uh, as we talked about in our at the end of our last episode, this episode we're going to be talking about project management. Um, and specifically, we're going to be talking about Clause 8.1 in RevD, which is operational planning and control. This is another one of those clauses that has both stayed the same, but also yet significantly changed. <laughs> yeah, you know, Mike, you know, this is a, this is a head scratcher. Um, it has stayed the same, yet it's significantly changed. So for many organizations, what they're doing is, is going to pretty well meet the requirements. But for other ones, this is going to be a big change. And so I thought we, in fact, for most organizations, this is going to be something they're going to need to consider because I tell you, the auditors are going to be looking at it. Yeah. So. In Rev-C, this was called, it was 7.1 project management, um, which was often overlooked uh, or at least not considered applicable by many organizations and and even the auditors, really. Really, that, and that was happening. And when we went through the training, um, in, in fact, the fact that it was overlooked and, and disregarded was one of the reasons it was changed. Yeah. And um, when we went through the AS9100 Rev D training, um, all of us auditors were were beaten on top of the head <laughs> to make sure that this was not going to be overlooked in the future. And uh, so we were in in previously um, project management, which we'll look at in some detail, was narrowly described, and because it was narrowly described, and you know, it was often often interpreted that it wasn't applicable. Yeah. Except when organizations had mid to large scale um, design development activities. Um, that was not intended to be the case, and it's certainly not intended to be the case now, and it's changed, um, or has, so it, it... It's definitely not intended to be the case for any activity that's new, anything that has changed uh, yeah, or, right. or has a life cycle that should be project managed. So in this one, we should not expect the auditors to just overlook it um, and say that it's not applicable. Correct, for any auditor that is, is past the, the upgrade <laughs> auditor training. Um, so what, it, what was stressed is that the organization should have a firm con understanding and control of what project and program management means and, and how they're defining it. So some of the things that might be expected uh, to be covered by this project planning are a company's expanding operations, uh, installing new equipment, planning for significant design or, or process change to an existing product, that kind of thing. Right. And so it's, it's not, it's not going to be acceptable to say, well, we've done that. You know, the, what the auditor is, is been told to consider whether the pro project program management is being done with rigor and, and, and consistently and done correctly, and we're looking for a, 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 a project management system with, with some rigor. You know. So it would be a good idea if organizations had an idea of what that looks like before the auditor gets there. It, it, it'll probably go much smoother if you, <laughs> if, if you approach it that way. So what we thought we might discuss is what this standard means, and we might want to give you a few hints on how, how what might be helpful to mm -hmm. you in putting this together. Um, but before we before we unpack the requirements of of in detail, let's look at what 8.1 operational planning and control covers in general. So in AS 9100 D 8.1 states the purpose and two main clauses and four subclauses and so as we're going to get into that but let's take a look at what those this the stated start. purpose yeah. is yeah. okay so 8.1 operational planning and control says the organization shall plan implement and control the processes c4.4 to meet the requirements for the provision of products and services and to implement the actions determined in clause 6. so we're going to discuss the purpose here in a minute because there's some significant things in here but but then it, then it goes on to state that the organization must accomplish that purpose by two primary actions a they got to determine the requirements for products and services that they're providing and b establishing criteria how you plan to accomplish a so both a and b are are, are pretty detailed as you're going to see yes they are and and there are four Subclauses to support yeah. uh, this this planning and control activity. You have 8.1.1 operational risk management, 8.1.2 configuration management, uh, 
8.1.3 product safety, and then point four is prevention of counterfeit parts. Yep, and because you're probably not planning on watching this for the rest of the weekend or however long you're doing this, we're going to cover those in other times. Yeah, we'll get to that later. So, so let's start packing this a little bit. All right, so take a look at Rev C's. Uh, I'm sorry, what Rev C says versus what Rev D does as we typically do. Um, and again, the name of the clause has in itself completely changed. So here we go. The Rev C, uh, again, was uh, 7.1, planning of product realization. And this said, the organization shall plan and develop the processes needed for product realization. Planning of product realization shall be consistent with the requirements of the other processes of the QMS. In planning product realization, the organization shall determine the following as appropriate. A, quality objectives and requirements for the product. Note, quality objectives and requirements for the product include consideration of aspects such as product and personnel safety, reliability and availability, maintainability, producibility and inspectability, suitability of parts and materials used in the product, selection and development of embedded software, and recycling or final disposal of the product at the end of its life. All right, so now let's take a look at Rev D. Rev D is now 8.1, Operational Planning and Control. And it says, the organization shall plan implement and control the processes, C4.4, needed to meet the requirements for the provision of products and services, and to implement the actions determined in Clause 6 by A, determining the requirements for the products and services. Note, determination of requirements for the products and services should include consideration of personal and product safety. That's really the same mm -hmm. so far. Producibility and inspectability. That's the same. Reliability, availability, and maintainability. Same. Suitability of parts and materials used in the product. Same. Selection and development of embedded software. Same. Product obsolescence. That's a new requirement. Prevention, detection, and removal of foreign objects. That's a new requirement. Handling, packaging, and preservation. That's new. Recycling or final disposal of the product at the end of its life. That's the same. So you, you'll notice here that RevC focused on, on planning, and so that one of the reasons we went through all of that is you'll see a lot of similarities, but one of the emphasis on RevC was really on planning, and RevD focuses on planning and control. So although the control issues were, were kind of stuck in to RevC, they're broken out and they're exp they're expecting to, the auditors are going to expect to see evidence of how this is being done. Remember, during audit training, it was beaten into us to look for a robust system here. So let's take a look at, at RevC again. All right, so here it is again. So here, here are what you've got. If you look at, at, at the planning, look how it starts. The organization shall, and it says it talks about planning and developing the processes needed in then it says, in planning the product realization, the organization shall determine the following as, the whole thing's pretty non-committal at this point, but then it gives you the big escape clause as appropriate. Um, when we take a look at Rev D, you'll notice that as appropriate is now gone. And as what they told us in the auditor training, this, this is something they're expecting every organization to have a robust system for managing operational planning and control and not saying well it wasn't applicable for us yeah. at this point it's and we'll we'll talk about why this is applicable for every organization for nearly everything they're doing and you have to have evidence to show that you've considered that list of requirements and that uh, and you'll notice that list has grown by a couple you're right and it's even more significant is the way they worded the first sentence so so we're now we're back to that that purpose again and it's kind of interesting the organization shall plan implement and control the processes and then they reference 4.4 so which are needed to meet those those requirements so taking a look at 4.4 you remember this and so it in, in fact we we did several episodes on this 4.4 so we're not going to go through this all again but yeah. you might go they might 
go back and yeah there we'll we'll try to put a link on the screen here if you haven't seen that episode go back and and, and check it out but in a nutshell 4.4 .4 is how you managing your processes and if you're rev c you've already have this in some of this in place they've added some stuff of course but identify the what the processes are the inputs the outputs um are expected from those processes um, sequence and interaction, how you know the processes are effective, who's responsible for the processes. I mean, all those things have to be done in place. So this clause is uh, requiring organizations to define the processes needed um, to accomplish project or, or program management and beyond. Exactly. They, you got to define what processes are, are, are used in this in this process you got to define it and there's got to be evidence that you've done that and further when you look back at 8.1 which is on the screen for you it also says that you you have to implement these actions in accordance with in clause 6 and uh, you remember clause 6 so in looking through clause 6 a b c d i mean no, that's a robust plan that's specific what you're going to be doing so the old method of saying, you know, we do project management it isn't going to get it. I mean, now you're looking at look, a robust plan mm -hmm. that defines who's going to do what and when you're going to do it. Yeah. So to tie this all together, they've taken out the as applicable. So now this, this is for every, it's for every organization. And then they specifically uh, reference a robust process-based planning method uh, that defines exactly what will be done. Um, you're in your establishing milestones and it's measurable. Yeah, it's interesting. So far, we just set the stage for what <laughs> what this is supposed to do and, and, and how to go about doing it. Yeah, and that's where RevD really changes. It does. Yes, it does. Not only does operational planning control apply to everyone, but now again, they're, they're requiring specific plans in place for how you plan to accomplish what you plan. Yes. So, so uh, in a moment, we'll talk about where we're heading with this and uh, and this gives us a moment to figure out where we're heading. So. <laughs> Learn all about AS9100 RevD with our new online course. This is the best resource to rapidly get you caught up on what's changed and what's new. Our course guides you through each part of the standard and teaches you how to implement it within your own organization. Each section is broken into bite-sized pieces, allowing you to work through the standard at your own pace. You can access the course as many times as you want making this the number one resource for when you need a quick refresh on a specific topic. Buy it today and get the guidance you need to achieve your RevD certification. Okay, so what is next? Well, it would be helpful to unpack the expanded and new requirements in operational control, which is always so exciting. I mean, I mean <laughs> well, breathtaking. Not as exciting as your next audit would be if you ignore those requirements. Oh yeah, so. that would be uh, you know, probably not a happy time. <laughs> That's so. sort of a carrot and stick kind of thing. Yeah. I, I get the stick if it's not done <laughs> properly, but you know, the beatings and the next audit will be using the stick, but what's the carrot? Well, the carrot is with a lot of this stuff that you actually will see real benefit from having uh, a robust planning and you know control process and hopefully avoid major problems uh, and make your life better. Yep. That's actually why they put it in there. Speaking of carrot, do, do we get lunch? Just be thankful you don't get the stick. <laughs> but <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for joining us. A little bit longer episode today. <clears throat> a lot to cover. <clears throat> Excuse me. A lot of setup for uh, what's to come. But uh, as always, we invite your, your questions, your feedback, your comments. Uh, hit us up on our website. <clears throat> hit us up in the comments below. Any way you want to get a hold of us. <clears throat> We're going to get off the air before I suffocate. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Goodbye.